Welcome to the Noonday Meditation with Wayne Vernon. Acts chapter 2, 42 and following. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. What does it mean to be community? And what does it mean to be the community of the Spirit? We continue our discussion on the Holy Spirit and community, the church and the Holy Spirit. What is the role and relationship of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church? The church is understood to be the community of the Spirit because it is formed by the Holy Spirit. And how so? According to Trevin Walks, the power of the Spirit that flowed through the Apostles' proclamation is the power that gathers people into a new community. The church today, however, exists in a culture of private religion. Wax again accurately reflects that some Christians tend to think of the gospel as just a transaction between the individual and God, just me and Jesus. The reality, however, is that individuals are reconciled and brought into a restored relationship with the living God, an intimate knowledge and love of him who first loved us. But we mustn't leave out the result of the gospel's proclamation in Acts 2. The cross restores our relationship to God and the result is restored relationship with others. Vertical reconciliation makes possible horizontal reconciliation and the horizontal dimension then magnifies the vertical, says Trevin Wax. Christianity is therefore understood as personal but not private. Believers in Jesus are ushered into a new community, a spirit-created community. And what does the spirit do then in such a community? The role of the Holy Spirit is to form the community, but the Holy Spirit also empowers this community he fills this community so it is a spirit formed community and it is also a spirit filled community so brothers and sisters the the concept of the church as the community of the spirit is not an abstract idea the church that you are a communicant member of that you fellowship with that you serve in is a creation of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit did not just form the church and leave it to function on a whim. The church is a spirit-filled community. And that I don't believe many Christians understand. Many of us as followers of Jesus Christ, I don't think we recognize that the church is a spirit-filled community. The ripple effects of the gospel's proclamation by the early apostles is amazing. Friends, when the cross restores our relationship with God, again, it restores our relationships around us, our relationship with others. And so how do we live out that relationship in community? The true spirit-filled church can only be understood as we look at 
the result of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the church on the day of Pentecost. The true Spirit-filled church is a joyful church. It is joyfully devoted to doctrine, to fellowship, to worship, to giving, and to prayer. So, one writer speaks of the portrait of the Spirit-filled church and, and had this to say, a Spirit-filled church is, a, is joyfully devoted to doctrine. Acts 2.42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. A Spirit-filled church is joyfully devoted to fellowship. They devoted themselves to fellowship and to the breaking of bread. A Spirit-filled church is joyfully devoted to generosity. It is a generous church. They shared their financial resources with others. A Spirit-filled church is joyfully devoted to prayer. They devoted themselves to prayer constantly. A Spirit-filled church is joyfully devoted to worship. It is a worshiping church. A spirit-filled church is joyfully devoted to evangelism. It is an evangelistic church. The church kept growing and God added to their number those who were being saved. Today, it is my prayer that we will think about the portrait of a spirit-filled church and ask God to help us that the church that we are a part of will indeed display the qualities and characteristics of a spirit-filled church devoted to doctrine, to fellowship, to worship, to giving, and to prayer. Is that the portrait of your church? If not, let's ask God to help us to revisit Acts chapter 2, 40 and following and that we will seek him that our church will become the Acts 2 church. Should you need further instructions in these matters, please feel free to text the number 647-696-0422. If you desire to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, please text the word salvation to this number as well. Someone is standing by to support you right now. If you've not yet secured your copy of my book, Six Practices of Effective Leadership, Today is your day to pick up your copy. You could get your copy on Amazon. You could get either the hard copy or the digital version. And we would love to support you in that regard. If you're in Jamaica, you could get your copy at the Montego Bay, Waltham Park, Sterling Castle, New Testament Churches of God, or at the bookshop at the head office of the New Testament Church of God, located in Roden, Spain, Old Harbor. If you're in Canada, you could pick up your copy at the West Toronto Church of God at 1655 Wilson Avenue. We would also love to hear from you how core leadership services may be of help to you in your local church or organization to raise up leaders for greater and for future leadership responsibilities. Let us know today how we could partner with you in that regard and we would be delighted to do so. Please remember our amazing Pentecost weekend celebration coming up May 26, 27, and 28 at the West Toronto Church of God with Bishop Tom Sturbins out of Tennessee. It's going to be an amazing time of empowerment and impartation and you don't want to miss it. Please invite your family and friends and all those in your social network to be there. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you for listening to the Noonday Meditation with Pastor Wayne Vernon. Please forward this study to your friends, your relatives, associates, neighbors, and all those persons in your social network. If you have a prayer request, please feel free to communicate with us and we will commit to supporting you in prayer. Until we meet again tomorrow, Shalom.